If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and reread the problem before listening on. We've learned in this chapter that for particles experiencing simple harmonic motion, that their position as a function of time is dictated by this equation. And we're going to end up setting up an equation both for particles one and two. In addition, the omega term, the angular frequency of the particle can be substituted with two pi divided by the period. So we're gonna actually rewrite the position equation making that substitution. So there we have it, we've replaced omega with two pi over the period. And as noted, we're going to be setting up an equation for each particle. The question notes that the motion of the particles differs in phase by pi over six radians. So what does that mean? Well, it means that for particle one, we can go ahead and let the phase angle equal zero radians. And for particle two, we can let the phase angle equal pi over six radians. And again, that's because they differ in phase by pi over six. So with these ideas in mind, let's go ahead and set up two equations, one for particle one and the other for particle two. Now, of course, for particle one, because we have this plus zero here, we can simplify that and just rewrite the equation as follows. We've also included subscripts of one and two for the position to denote particles one and two respectively. Now that we've set up these two equations, it's important for us to make some sense of this value known as x sub m. x sub m is going to be the amplitude of each particle's motion. Now, we go back and we read, and it says that the particles are oscillating along a common straight line segment of length a. So we want to try to visualize that, and to do that, we've drawn this picture down here. We've labeled that straight line segment with a value of A. We can get a feel for the particle bouncing back and forth between the negative amplitude and the positive amplitude. And you want to ask yourself, well, how can I represent that amplitude in terms of A? Now, the amplitude itself would be this distance here. So it's the distance from the equilibrium position to its maximum position. That is the amplitude. But hopefully we can see from this diagram that that is actually going to be capital A divided by 2. So the value of the amplitude, the value of xm, will be denoted or represented as A divided by 2, and that's going to be true for both particles 1 and 2. So for x sub m, into each equation, we will substitute this value A divided by 2. We can next go back and understand capital T. Capital T is the period of motion for each particle. It's basically how long it takes the particle to complete one cycle of its motion. And this question noted that each particle, clean this up just a little bit, has a period of 1.5 seconds. So for each particle, we can say capital T is equal to 1.5 seconds. So we'll make that substitution. And finally, we go back and we notice that the question in part A is how far apart are the particles in terms of A half of a second after the lagging particle leaves one end of the path. So this means that lowercase t is going to equal 0.5 seconds. So we're going to go to our equations and we're going to substitute in 0.5 seconds for the value of lowercase t. So we've plugged in the value of little t, and now what we'll do is we'll make sure our calculators are set to radian mode. Whenever you use this position equation, make sure your calculator is set to radian mode. We're going to have a divided by 2, and then you can pick up that calculator and you can enter all of that in at once, and when you do so, you should get negative 0.5. And then for the other situation down here, again, you can enter that into your calculator all at once, and you would find that the position, x sub 2, is equal to a over 2 multiplied by approximately negative 0.866. Now we're gonna to wanna to simplify each one of these. So let's look back at x1, and if you look carefully, you can see that the negative 0.5 is gonna be divided by two. So x1 would actually be negative 0.25 multiplied by a. And then down here, we're going to take that negative 0.866 and divide that by 2. So then x2 is going to be approximately negative 0.43 multiplied by a. Now the question in part a wanted to know how far apart are they in terms of a. So we're basically just going to subtract these two positions. And when we do that, we get approximately 0.18a. 
So this would be the horizontal distance separating the two particles after a period of time of half of a second. That is the correct answer to part A of the question. Let's go back up and take a look at part B. It says, are they then, when they say then, they mean half of a second, are they then moving in the same direction toward each other or away from each other. And to get a feel for what direction each particle is traveling in, we would want to actually look at the velocity equations rather than the position equations. So let's take a look at velocity. So here's the equation for velocity, which can actually be derived by taking the earlier position equation and differentiating it with respect to time. But the book also gives us this equation directly. We're going to make the same kind of substitution that we did earlier. We're going to replace omega with the term 2 pi over t. And notice we're going to actually replace it in two different spots there. And then just like before, we're going to set up two different equations, one for particle one, one for particle two. Let's not forget that this x sub m for both particles was capital A divided by two. This value of the phase angle was zero for particle one, and then it was the pi over six for particle two. And then the period for both of these was one and a half seconds. So let's set up the two equations for each particle's velocity. There we have it. And then again, finally, we're going to plug in for lowercase t the value of half of a second, turn on our calculator to radian mode and begin evaluating. So let's plug in half of a second for t. And then we'll evaluate everything here. So the way that you want to do this is you're going to want to plug all that into your calculator and then divide by two because we have a divided by two and then multiply by the sign of all of that stuff right there. And when you do that, you should get approximately negative 1.8. So this would come out to negative 1.8 multiplied by a. So that's the velocity of particle one. And then same thing here, you wanna evaluate this on your calculator, but then divide by two and then multiply that by the sign of all of that good stuff. And when you do that, you should see that your velocity of particle two is approximately negative 1.0 a. Now, the thing to notice is that these two velocities are both negative valued. So that means that the particles are traveling in that negative direction. Therefore, at half of a second, they are indeed traveling in the same direction. And that's really all we have to do for part B, because remember, it just asked, are they then moving in the same direction, etc. So lo and behold, they are moving in the same direction. That is the correct answer to part B.